live community, also our viewing audience, that we are all here by divine appointment, that nothing happens by chance. We heard the call and we answered. And out of that answering, it's amazing how many doors open for us. Our theme for the month is free to be. This morning we're going to look at free to express, <coughs> free to allow that energy to come forth in a way that perhaps it has never come forth before. That our throat chakra, this energy, this opportunity that we have to decree, to decree a thing, as Jesus the Christ said, decree a thing, and what? It is established unto thee. That which we utter becomes the outer. We are free to express our gifts, our talents, our energy, our sadnesses, our tears, our laughter. We are free to express it all. We are in human form. As our humanness gives way to the divine, the Christ consciousness arises triumphant and victorious over all of these things in the outer world. Be of good cheer, Jesus said, for I have overcome the world of conditions, appearances, and effects. Be of good cheer. When we know at that deepest part of us that, hey, I no longer react to that, I no longer give my power away to that. I no longer put my energy over here. I stand firm in the knowingness that God and I are the majority, and there is none else. God and I are the majority. That we are free to express it all in the knowingness that we are created in the image and likeness of God, that it is good and very good in the recognition and the opportunity that we have every single day of our lives to, hey, here's the paints, here's the brushes. You paint paradise and in you go. And if you paint something that you no longer relate to, you paint that out and you paint something else in because we are free to express who and what we are. And the energy of that allows us to keep growing and unfolding in miraculous ways. I am a charter member of the Spiritual Cinema Circle. And once a month we receive these DVDs and I put it out there. It is a wonderful opportunity to experience spiritual cinema. And each month they, uh, Stephen Simon, who was the director of What Dreams May Come and Somewhere in Time, this was one of his dreams. And he said that Gay Hendricks, who uh, wrote, he's a author, a prolific author, learning to love yourself is what he was really first known for. He came to him, he said, we need to put it out into the ethers, the energy field, something that allows us to be uplifted, that allows our consciousness to expand, not just sex, videotape, and all of the other violence that goes on in the media, but the recognition that there is a power for good in the universe greater than we are, and we can absolutely use it. And as we're using it, we're growing and unfolding. Because when we sit in a cinema, or a theater, or in front of the television set, and we're experiencing all this violence, it does not forward and advance our consciousness. So he had this dream of spiritual cinema, and he said they have just now uh, published their 100th uh, DVD, and he was feeling very, very good about that. And each month, there is, he has various members of the community come from all over the world to sit and chat and review each one of the films. And this month he had a unity minister was there, Reverend Kathleen from Cincinnati. And he said, so you're a reverend? And she said, yes I am. He says, that must just be so gratifying. And she said, it is so gratifying, but very, very hard as well. And as I listened to her, she had been at Cincinnati for two years, she said, and the hard part is that we want absolutely everyone to get it. We want people to, to feel how special and powerful they are through the principles of science of mind and the recognition that we do not go through a third party to find God. We are the experience God is having. It is within us and everywhere present. We experience our oneness beyond color, race, creed, or sexual orientation because our God is a God of oneness. Do we agree with that? Yes. Absolutely. Our God 
is a God of oneness. And through this power that we have been given, that we can utilize the principles of successful living, that we can have our experiences, that we can open our hearts to compassion. And as I listened to this unity minister, and her, she said, I, was, I owned a restaurant for 30 years. She said, it was great training for the ministry. She said, she said we were into customer service. I thought, wonderful. And she said, and we were a hugging restaurant. And everybody that came in, they got a hug from us. And she said, my church in Cincinnati, we're a hugging ministry. Everyone that comes in gets a hug. I thought, you know, whether they like it or not, right? And we learned to let go and let God. Because for a lot of us, you know, we haven't been familiar with that kind of affection. We're not used to it. And I was told that, you know, some people run the other way. But some people just absolutely come in into the enfoldment and unfoldment of a spiritual community. And every great teacher, seer, and avatar has talked about community. The two or three gathered together. And one of the films was Finding Joe, and it was about Joseph Campbell, who is one of my heroes and wrote The Hero's Adventure, that every single one of us are on a hero's adventure, that we hear the call, we answer the call, we go through all the archetypes, we go through, through feeling separated and feeling energetically that how am I ever going to get through this? But we always come back to the place that we, we began, to know that place where we started, to really experience it for the very first time. And I love, they are interviewing amazing teachers and some amazing, wonderful energies. And one of the people that they interviewed, believe it or not, was Fleetwood Mac. And he said, yes, he said, you know, uh, my father wanted me to go to university, and I just told him, Dad, I want to be a drummer. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. He said, and Dad sent me to London with my drums. And I went to London with my drums. And it was my passion, but I didn't know that it was my passion. And he said, I loved it. And he said, I didn't think about making lots of money. I didn't think about fame and fortune or any of that. I thought about, I love drumming. And out of that, I received a life that has been amazing. Out of loving what I do and doing what I love. Now, Gay Hendricks, who wrote uh, the wonderful book, Learning to Love Yourself. He said when he was 24 years old, I weighed 320 pounds. I was in a relationship that uh, no longer served either one of us. I hated my job. I was a chain smoker. Nothing was working. I walked out one day, he said, and it was very, it had snowed and there was sleet and there was just all kinds of weather. And he said, I lost my footing and I went up in the air and I fell and hit my head on the ice. I went, he said, unconscious for, you know, a certain amount of time. And I knew as I lay there that I needed to change my focus, that I needed to change my life, that this was the sledgehammer getting my attention. And at 24 years old, I began to listen. He said, you can learn your lessons through the tickling of a feather or you can learn to the sledgehammer, pounding you on the head, saying, when are you ever going to get it? You're just so hard-headed, you know. We first tapped on the door ever so gently. What did we say? Oh, we're so busy. You know, that lower vibratory frequency, we're just so busy. Scattered energies everywhere, just so busy. But when we are in tune to that energy of the universe that is getting our attention, and beginning to listen. And that doesn't mean that we're going to like all of the journey. Some of the journey is very hard. It is very difficult. It is very steep. But when we began to embrace and express ourselves in the energy of loving what we do and doing what we love and having that be our passion, I they interviewed the, the world record skateboarder who created uh, an amazing foundation for youth. They interviewed the, the award-winning surfer of, of uh, the world 
who again created a foundation for you, that they love what they did so much that they were also doing good works out of these amazing professions that would we would never dream of that could be out there. And that these people came together to acknowledge that there is a way to express ourselves, that we can love what we do, that we have joy in what we do. And I know, you know, that I could not be standing up here before you after almost 38 years in the ministry if I didn't absolutely love it. Have I cried? Yes. Have I had my experiences where I thought, oh, what's going on here? Absolutely yes. And when I have found that I have felt the rug pulled out from under me, I always land on higher ground. And I also reach beyond myself to the prayer ministry, to our director of our ministry of prayer, and say, please know the truth for me about this situation because I am so uh, subjectively involved in it, I do not see the forest for the trees. But until we go into the forest, until we answer the call of the hero, until we go into the unknown terrain, we don't really grow. We grow by going in and stretching ourselves and doing what is also very uncomfortable. That's why I acknowledge our street fair team that going out into the world. And of course, if it's uncomfortable, and I did it myself, we had like a little group, we did it, and I felt, you know, a little uncomfortable. You know, come to Interfaith, it's, all, it's so wonderful. And they said, well, who's there? And I said, Dr. Sharon Stroud, you'll love her. You'll just love her, love her, love her. I never say who I am. <laughs> I don't want to intimidate anybody, right? And wherever we are, we just was putting out the cards, but we did go to friendly territory like Crystal Fantasy and places in Palm Springs that we knew were receptive to our message, but maybe had not heard about us. And the fact that we now have a presence at the street fair and that people are drawn in to the energy and they're saying, I felt an energy as I passed your booth. I felt something here, tell me more, that we can share our way of life, that we can acknowledge it. I saw a very cute cartoon, it was a, it was a Zen monk, and it has the little tiny person with her little robes on, and she walks up to the Zen monk and he said, uh, have you, uh, now that you have reached enlightenment, you may go out and shop at the mall. You know, she's just like this little person. And I thought to myself, that is so perfect. Because now that we've reached enlightenment, we can go out into the marketplace. We can share who we are. We can acknowledge energetically that there is something for us to do. That yes, at times it's hard, at times we just don't see clearly. But there are always people in our experience that do see clearly. And there's a great legend about, it's called the man, and he was always doing good works. And this is just who he was in the village. And one day, the angel of light came to him and said, you are so amazing. You are unconditional. Everyone who comes within your presence, there is no judgment. There is unconditional love. There is a welcoming. There is no blame. There is no looking outside. The Lord God wanted to give you something, something very special. Would you like the gift of healing? He said, oh, no. No, angel, I don't. I let God do the healing. You know, I'm just doing what I'm doing here. He said, would you like those that, that have sinned and fallen short of who and what they are to be cleansed in your presence? He said, oh no, I don't claim to know man or woman's heart. No, thank you. And so the angel of light went on and on and on about all the things that the Lord God could do for him. And finally he said, you know, I want none of that. I just want to do good works and not be found out, just to be who I am. And so the angel of light said, so be it, it is done unto you. So everywhere the man went, his shadow went with him and was imbued with good works. And whoever came within the man's shadow was healed, was uplifted. The cares fell from their faces, the burdens from their shoulders. They were uplifted in his presence because there was no agenda. There was no trying to get the great riches or the great whatever out there. There was just the quiet recognition of the daily life, which is our temple and our religion. That the shadow goes with us every single day of our lives, 
and that shadow is imbued with the energy of the Holy Spirit. And that when we spiritualize our consciousness, our hearts and our minds, everyone and anyone who comes within our energy field is healed and uplifted in our presence. I received an email yesterday by a woman whose son had passed away as, as a little boy. And she said that she went out to eat and it was just absolutely amazing because she said energetically she could feel the presence of her son. And that as she shared her meal and she walked outside, there was this luminous, you know, those wonderful foil blooms that people give you when it's some kind of an occasion. And she said there was a foil balloon and it was began going up into the skies. And as the balloon shifted, it said, I love you, Mom. And I thought, thank you so much for sharing this with me. That on the anniversary of his passing, that he still is in the energy field beyond the reach of hands yet ever in the heart to give that message of I love you. Love is the strongest healing power in the universe. Love is what motivates each and every one of us. That unconditional love of self and the knowingness that the commandment that we were given by Jesus who became the Christ was love one another as I have loved thee. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself, which presupposes that we love ourselves, which acknowledges that when someone comes to us and says, I love you, or I appreciate you, or I, I just love being in your energy field, we receive that as a gift, that we are transcendent, that we move beyond where we've ever, ever been before, because the universe is for us. And I love it because every time I need like a little answer to something, the universe provides me with a feather at my feet or it's flowing down. And that I have a nest of doves that's right above in a patio area that I have at my home. And that this, this feather came, came down and landed at my feet. And I've been yeah, wanting to do something. And I said, ah oh, yes, a sign and a symbol that I can just be tickled with the feather. And any of you that need to be tickled with the feather, a lot better than the slow jammer, isn't it? I want you to know, I've got your feather. I'll be at the front door. Any of you that need a tickling, I've got it here. Because the universe always says yes. And whatever form that is, the signs and the symbols of life that allow us to come forth in greater ways, we are free to express ourselves to express our light, our energy, our aliveness, to be all that we can be. We are free here today to rise up together and acknowledge that we are going where? Higher yet. yet. Where are we going? Higher, higher yet. yet. Where? Higher, higher yet. yet. And that does make all the difference. God bless you. I love you. And I know who you are. Namaste.